Right. So if you have read and understood, considering the surgical and optimal station, kindly identify the structures. What are you looking at? This one sixteen. Yeah, that's um, the extensor retinoculum. Yes, kindly tell me the attachment of extensor retinoculum. It attaches laterally to the uh, radius and um, medially to the piciform and tracheotron. Okay, where about in radius? Can you be specific? The radius styloid. Radius okay. styloid. Can you please tell me uh, how many compartments there are in extensor retinoculum and what part of six column? Yes. We have six compartments, yes. and um, beneath the compartment, you have the sensor tendons. The first compartment, you have the abductor pollicis longus and extensor pollicis brevis. Yes. The second compartment, you have the extensor capa radialis longus and brevis. The third compartment, you have the extensor pollicis longus. The fourth compartment, you have the extensor indices longus indices and the extensor communis. Uh, the fifth compartment, you have the extensor digiti minimi. And the last component is six. You have the extensor capi ulnaris. Good. Okay. Can you please identify the structure which is being exhibited like this with this structure three? So what stru what structure is this? Can you identify the tendon or structure, whatever I can call it? Um, that's the number three. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Please. Three is like uh, showing this tendon. Yeah, it's the um, is the jump is the jump three uh, communis between the tendons, like the communication between the accessor tendons. Okay, in the right hand side picture, uh, this view is especially expo uh, like focused on some structure. Can you be able to tell identify the structure and tell me the boundaries of it, please? Yes, um, this structure is showing uh, specifically, I think, the anatomical um, snap yeah. box area. Very good, very good. The, the 23, the structure 23 is the extensor uh, pollicis brevis. Yes. The 14 is a uh, doctor pollicis longus. Um, 15 is extensor um, pollicis longus. Yes. Then 2 is radial artery. Good. What are the contents of uh, an optical snuff box? Uh, the content is the is the radial artery. The content. Good. Yes. Okay. What is the significance of an optical snuff box? Why you should? Why is it important for you to know the boundaries and why should you pay importance to it? Yeah, the bone that uh, forms the uh, floor of the anatomical snuff box is the scaphoid. Yes. And, uh, yeah, and this scaphoid has a unique anatomy in terms of blood supply. Very the good. The supply is, um, is from the dorsal branch of the radial artery and from the, and from the palmar branch. The dorsal branch is the main arterial supply and it enters from the waist and supply the pool of the scaphoid distally. That's distally. a true yes. retrograde flow. So when there's a fracture, one can have um, a vascular necrosis of the, of the scaphoid. What is the ideal way of diagnosing a scaphoid fracture? Uh, to be an MRI. Very good. Okay. Can you please tell me the dorsal palmar arch? How is it formed? Uh, the dorsal palmar arch is formed from the communication from the uh, distal um, communication, distal continuation of the radial artery and the ulnar artery. And they form an hack on the dorsal surface of the, um, of the hand. Okay. Can you please identify the structures here? Um, right, in this one, if you can identify the structure nine on the picture A first, please. Structure nine, uh, my cursor. Yes, here. Uh, sorry. No, can I come back to that? Okay. Can you identify 12, please? The 12th is um, flexor, um, I think that's FDS, flexor dictorum superficialis. Okay. Can you please tell uh, me, yes, uh, can you please tell me if how hypotenor eminence is formed? The hypotenor eminence is formed by um, 
some combination of muscles. We have the Which abductor digiti minimi. We have the opponent digiti minimi and flexor digiti minimi. Okay, what are the muscles which are forming thinner eminence and what the is thinner eminence? We have the the terminal eminence muscles are the opponent pollicis. Yes. We have the flexor uh, pollicis and abductor uh, and abductor pollicis. Okay, various. and supplied by and supplied by median nerve. Okay, very good. Can you identify on now? I'm coming on the right hand side picture. Can you yes, identify please. the structure nineteen, please? Nineteen is the flexor retinal column. So please tell me the attachment of flexor retinal column. The attachment um, laterally is to the scaphoid and the trape trapezoid, and um, uh, medially is to the trachytron and pisiform. Okay, can you please tell me? Uh, this flexor retinoculum it becomes a uh, reason, uh, or it contributes to trapment of one nerve. What is which is, is that nerve, and what is that condition called? As a carpal tunnel syndrome, and it causes uh, the nerve implicated in media nerve. Okay, what should be the how it is it diagnosed, and what should be the treatment? Um, is that is. A um, combination of uh, clinical uh, history, one can do the an examination like the TNL sign, yes, and um, can also be diagnosed by nerve conduction tests um, to show that it's a compression and um, affectation of the nerve, and this is treated by um, the compression, which okay. involves uh, actually excision of the uh, making a nip and the flexor atlantica. Uh, right. Can you tell me what is the test called for the for the confirmation of the collateral circulation of the hand, and how is that yeah, test that's done? Called the, yeah, that's called the Allen's test. Yes. And how is it this done? This test please? is done by yeah. This test is done by uh, one occludes either the radial or the ulnar artery. After occluding, for example, the radial artery, then you make a flick. You make a you make a clench fist for some seconds. Then after releasing the clenched fist, you expect the whole hand to be perfused in seconds. So if this fills, then that should there's a breach in the communication between the ulnar and the radial side. And, all right. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Can you tell me the movements, all the movements which are possible on the thumb? Yeah, on the thumb we can we have the flexor, flexion, yes. which is by the flexor policies, yes. um and longus. We have the um, abduction, which is by the abductor pollicis, uh, brevis and long, uh, brevis. We have the extension, which is by the abductor longus, ex, abductor pollicis longus, extensor pollicis longus, and extensor pollicis. We have the abduction, which is by the abductor uh, pollicis. Okay. How many carpal bones are there? How, how many carpal bones are there? Carpal bones. Can you, uh, carpal bones. Yes. Can you mention all the carpal bones? We we'll have this. We we'll have the scaphoid. We have the proximal rules and the distal rules. Yes. From lateral to medial, we we'll have the scaphoid proximally, lunate, uh, trapezium, and um, um, pisiform. We we'll have the distal. We we'll have the uh, um, sorry. We we'll have the scaphoid, lunate, trachytron, pisiform. Distally, we have the trape trapezium, trapezoid, capitate, and hook of hamid, and hamid. All right, can you please, one last question, tell me the nerve supply of the navicular bone. That is not of, of the, the... Wait. Nerve supply of what? The lunate bone, sorry. Blood Not supply, the blood supply of, of the, the lunate bone. Blood supply of the lunate bone is from the radial artery. Sure, same thing. Yes. Okay. Can I go back to nine? Yes, please. That nine wasn't clear. Uh, do you remember now? I think it's the flexor capi ulnaris. Okay, along sure. with that, uh, I also want you to identify 29 over here in this picture. It's important. Yeah, that is nine is the... Um, um, is the superficial palm, palm arch. Yes, how is yes. it formed? Yeah, it's formed by the um, collateral branches from the radial artery and the ulnar ulna artery. Okay, one more thing, uh, two more thing. In fact, what is thirty-one? 
That's one is the is the radial artery. Medial. That's the yeah radial. Radial. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Ulna. That's Ulna. the um, yes. ulna. Yes. Okay, and Another then the uh, this is twenty-seven. Yeah, twenty-seven is radial. Twenty-seven is radial. Yes, good. All right. One question. Yes. Uh, yes. Those two, those two muscles which are inserted. Can you please tell me how they are inserted? Flexor distrum okay, superficialis flexor, and flexor distrum yeah. prof, uh, profundus. profundus. Yeah, the flexor digitorum superficialis um, attaches to the um, sides of the medial phalanx and medial this phalanx, helps yeah. them to, yes, and this helps in the flexion of the proximal interphalangeal joint. Yes. The um, flexor digitorum profundus attaches to the uh, base of the distal phalanx, and this helps in the flexion of the uh, DIP, distal interphalangeal joint. Yes. Then they can ask you to tell them how would you test these two tendons? Yes, I can test the tendon by um, the, the, the profundus by holding the, by flexing the other digits. And yes. having the patient to hold one straight the digit I want to test, then I tried to put the um, proximal interphalangeal joint in extension by holding it and tell the patient to try and flex the uh, the distal interphalangeal joint. So this this tests for the um, this tests for the flexor digitorum profundus. Testing for the flexor, yeah. Protecting for the flexor digitorum superficialis, I'll tell the patient to extend all the digits. I hold all the digits in extension and tell the patient to flex the digit I want to test. So if the patient is able to test this, then that's the flexor digitorum superficialis. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.